pain, I can see it. The pain that you have to go through for that, I think I'll know. River Monsters was a fan favorite show that ran for years. People love watching Jeremy Wade and his crazy adventures. But then after so long on the air, the show just ended and no one really knew why. So what happened? Why did the show end and what did Jeremy think about it all? Jeremy Wade started out as a humble angler. His childhood hobby in rural England evolved into a quest across the globe's hidden waters. But it was in the shadows of the Congo River where Jeremy faced his biggest challenge. Jeremy was more than your average fisherman. He was an explorer at heart, but his local waterways were just the starting point of an incredible journey. The calm waters of England soon led to the vast, mysterious rivers of the world. Jeremy's journey wasn't one of comfort and ease. He lived a life of sacrifice, taking on odd jobs and embracing a nomadic existence. Who else would trade everyday life comforts for the pursuit of the unknown? Jeremy did, and his dedication opened the doors to some of the planet's most hidden aquatic realms. The Congo River wasn't just a stop on his map, it was a test of endurance. Here, Jeremy was more than a fisherman. He was a survivor. Yet, it was here that Jeremy's story took on legendary proportions. Facing malaria didn't deter him at all. Surviving this ordeal was a stark reminder of the dangers he faced. But even this couldn't dampen his curiosity. To Jeremy, each risk was a chapter in his ever-growing saga of exploration. The Congo River was like a realm from another world to him. Here, every catch had the potential to be a groundbreaking discovery. In these waters, Jeremy wasn't just fishing he was unraveling the secrets of the unknown. Each expedition shed light on unknown facets of river life, deepening our understanding of nature. In the heart of the Congo, Jeremy's legacy as a true explorer was cemented. This passion led him to one elusive giant, the Goliath tigerfish, a creature so fierce that it took Jeremy 25 years to conquer. But then the climate began to change the game. Rising temperatures and unpredictable waters were starting to become more of an issue. Jeremy saw firsthand the shrinking sizes of his aquatic adversaries and his conservationist heart couldn't ignore these signs. Did you know that River Monsters was more than just an angling show? It was a beacon for science education. Jeremy's expeditions aided crucial research, tagging sharks, collecting DNA, and unveiling hidden truths. His dedication went beyond the thrill. It was a mission to protect these river giants. Yet, controversy lurked beneath its surface. Critics claimed that the show demonized its aquatic stars, painting them as monsters to be feared. Jeremy admitted to the sensationalism, but his goal was clear. To reach and educate a big audience, his aim was understanding not fear. Many people know this, but River Monsters actually began with a simple documentary. Jungle Hooks, a tale of survival and discovery in the Amazon, was Jeremy's stepping stone to fame. It captured everything from harrowing plane crashes to triumphant catches. This document laid the groundwork for what would become a global phenomenon. But River Monsters wasn't just a hit with the typical angling crowd. Surprisingly, almost half of its viewers were women. River Monsters transcended gender, age, and culture, captivating a diverse audience worldwide. Jeremy's storytelling, which was a blend of mystery and science, had universal appeal. But the journey wasn't without its perils for Jeremy and his crew. Each expedition was a battle against time, nature, and unforeseen dangers. From medical emergencies to confrontations with nature's fury, they were always on the edge. In one of their most challenging quests, Jeremy faced the elusive muscalunge, a fish of 10,000 casts, a test of patience, skill, and sheer willpower. The frustration and near defeat and ultimately the triumph were a metaphor for his entire journey. This catch was more than a fish. It was a battle against his own limits. But let's not forget the toll of such an adventurous life. Injuries, close calls, and the constant dance with danger. Yet through it all, Jeremy remained committed to conservation and education. His refusal to indulge in trophies and unsustainable fish consumption speaks volumes of his character. So why did River Monster in? It wasn't due to declining ratings or a lack of ideas. It was because Jeremy Wade, the heart of the show, had achieved his dream. He had encountered every River Monster he set out to find, completing a quest that began as a child's curiosity. The final season promised to be the grandest of all, teasing unknown sea monsters and more. But in the end, it was Jeremy's fulfillment of his lifelong mission that led to the show's closure. A journey that began with a boy and a fishing rod ended with a man who had explored and shared the greatest river mystery. So, there you have it. The Tale of River Monsters. Jeremy's legacy is not just about the fish he caught, but also about the hearts he won and the minds he enlightened. But 
What do you guys think about all this? What do you think about the end of River Monsters? Let me know in the comments below.